Welcome back to the Cross Border Interview Podcast. Uh, today's guest is the owner of Limitless Impact Virtual Management, Brianna Kuhn. Uh, Brianna, thank you so much for doing this today. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm very excited. Um, so before we start, I guess I guess you should uh, let my listeners know, what is Limitless Impact? Well, I started my business in January of 2020, just before all the craziness <laughs> hit. So perfect timing. Um, I had worked in real estate uh, for about five years and I actually uh, lost my job uh, uh, Christmas of 2019 just before and I kind of was at a loss and you know I had all these skills that I had learned um, and I didn't really get the satisfaction I wanted out of a career working as an employee. And, you know, I went on a couple job interviews and again, nothing really fit what I was looking for. And then I just kind of had this idea of, you know, I have all these skills, but I don't want to just use them for one company or one person. What if I created something where I could work for multiple people and help multiple uh, small to medium sized businesses? And that's how Limitless Impact was born. And you know, I've grown it from just a handful of clients um, to about uh, 40 plus across North America, uh, North America in a span of about 15 months. So <laughs> yeah, so the whole premise of my company is I want to be a one-stop shop for entrepreneurs and small business owners. So they can come to me, you know, for a flat fee a month and they can have access to strategic planning with me. I have a graphic designer. I have a content and copywriter. I have another virtual assistant who helps me with all the technical stuff, uh, as well as I have an administration girl who's an expert with data entry and Excel and all that complicated stuff. And then I also have my younger sister actually um, working for me part-time. Um, and sh she's actually in her fourth year of engineering at the U of A oh. in Alberta. Um, but she's very logical and she's really good at picking out little details and how to improve something and streamline stuff. So my one statement that I always say that kind of just wraps everything up with a nice bow is let me work in your business so you can work on your business. So how do you do that? So with everything going on in the world right now, and it's like, congratulations, 15 months, and you've had that many clients and all across North America. How do you do that? How do you work with businesses so they can work on their businesses? Because that, that that's a lot to unfold here is how do you as a limitless impact get into the business and let them work on their business while helping them? Yeah, so a lot of business owners come to me or I reach out to them because I see, you know, components that can either be streamlined or they're just bogged down by all these tedious tasks that they could very easily outsource and delegate to someone else so they can focus on what is driving their company and why they got into business in the first place, whether it's coaching people um, or, you know, planning weddings or a bakery or, you know, real estate, anything. I work with such a wide variety of different industries and it all comes down to when you are an entrepreneur, you have to get out of the mindset of you have, of you having to be a master of everything. It's okay not to be. And it's actually better for you health-wise and stress-wise to not feel like you have to control everything and that you can let go of some of those aspects and have someone else who does it on a day-to-day -day basis and who's a master at it and let them take it over so that you can focus on driving sales, getting more clients and stuff like that. One of the biggest components uh, to that is social media. So I help a lot of uh, my clients with social media strategy as well as management. Uh, I have clients that they just give me their login information and I do everything. <laughs> They're like, I don't want anything to do with it. You do it. Uh, and then I have, you know, the other end of the spectrum where they provide me with the content um, graphics and the written uh, content. And they just tell me, just post it, you know, uh, grow my account, respond to the people who are engaging with it. I'll provide you with everything that I want to be posted. Um, other components of it is 
a lot of the tedious stuff like website management and creating those automatic workflows for when they're launching a new course. So setting all of that up. So there's really, there's so much that I can help with. And I've always wanted to be that one-stop shop. So someone can come to me and be like, hey, I want you to do my social media. We do that for a couple months and then they come back and they're like, hey, do you think maybe you could help me with this? And they start getting comfortable with, you know, delegating more and more to me because they're seeing that by alleviating those tasks and that stress, they're able to grow and scale their business. Social media has become a uh, entity of its own in today's society. It was not here five years ago. It wasn't even here hypothetically even three, well, probably five years ago, but it is slowly becoming a entity of itself that if businesses do not get on social media, they're going to be left behind, especially in today's society with the pandemic. Uh, we've realized that online pl uh, platforms are a must. How does Limitless Impact help businesses who are apprehensive to get on social media because social media can be a double-edged sword. You know that, I know that. Uh, there's some good and there's some bad with social media. So how do you get businesses to buy into, you know what, social media and website and communications and marketing is the way for it if you wanna build your brand and grow your company? Honestly, what I do is I show them the proof. I show them the proof of my business and how much I've been able to grow as well as my clients. And that's usually the deciding factor for them. I do work with uh, a lot of older uh, entrepreneurs um, that, you know, didn't necessarily grow up with social media. I mean, I'm 25, but the majority of my clients are 40 plus. And I love being that resource for them. If they have questions about social media, they can just ask. And with social media, it's, you know, it's such a powerful tool because it helps with your visibility. And nowadays, some businesses don't even really have complex websites anymore. It's usually one or two pages and it's their social media that is their portfolio, you know, their shop, everything and it's such a good way to expose yourself to so many more demographics of people across the world and to you know expose your business and your product or your service uh, even for myself this week i one of my instagram reels i don't pay a cent in boosted posts or facebook ads anything um, I'm all about the organic growth and getting visible, uh, visibility that way because it's organic engagement and that's what you want. And I'm not saying that Facebook ads and stuff like that are bad. It's just when you get in the habit of relying on spending money for those views, it can be a little bit of a black hole. <laughs> and even for myself, like this past, uh, past week, as I was saying, I had someone reach out to me because they saw an Instagram reel that I posted and they were like, oh my God, like, I need to talk to you. Like, I need you to help me, you know, shape my social media strategy so that I can expand like you have. And yeah, and that's just proof right there that this girl, she's in Toronto, I'm in Edmonton. She found me on social media. How do you stand out though? How do you get businesses to stand out? And to, because the market is so saturated with all business types. And let's be honest, uh, every day there's a new business coming online who is uh, selling something, uh, offering a product or offering a service. How do you let your help your businesses grow in a saturated market that is 2021? Well, one of the biggest things I do is when I onboard a new client uh, for social media management or coaching, I take a deep dive into where their profile is now. And my favorite is when they come to me and they don't have any social media. So we're literally starting from scratch. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's a rarity nowadays. But with my clients, I take that deep dive and I you know, I study their analytics, see what's working for them currently, how we can make those little tweaks, whether it's posting on a different day or posting at a different time, or, you know, posting a story first 
and then a couple of hours later, then making a feed post. And those little things are so important and understanding your analytics and how you fit into the algorithm of Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, like all of them is really what is going to give you that next step and that growth. Uh, Cause if you're just posting blindly, there's no strategy there. There's no, you just know, don't know. You're just putting it out there and just throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing if it's going to stick. But if you're posting with a strategy, you know that you're going to get a certain amount of engagement and, you know, potentially leads from it. And also one of the other things that I always preach about social media is when you show up authentically and real, that's what matters. Yeah. You know, there's so much fake stuff on social media and, but you're seeing now that celebrities are being called out for using Photoshop and filters and more and more people are posting you know about their flaws about you know the downsides of certain things and being honest and telling the truth and that's the stuff that's going viral um limitless impact just doesn't do social media it has a wide range of services that you offer um yet again for my listeners if you want to visit limitless impact uh website it uh, will be linked in the show notes below so please take a look at it but we are going to dive a little bit into the services that you do provide outside of that social media because it is one aspect and i want to let uh, you tell our listeners and people who potentially might be looking for a consultant like yourself to uh, work or a partnership with you um, so I'm going to go through the six that you have because I have it pulled up on my screen right now. So administrative support, how do you help businesses with administrative support? So it is kind of a broad term, but typically a lot of my clients, when they come to me for support and administrative uh, tasks, a lot of it has to do with uh, email management. So I have a lot of people who their inbox has gone out of control and they have 12,000, you know, unread emails and they're like, oh my God, I need help. Uh, so I've done it where we've done a complete makeover of inboxes, filed them all, you know, taught them how to uh, strategically file everything and a new kind of project management tool with it. Um, also too with administrative data entry, um, any sort of um, CRM kind of system. So like I have one client who we just, we're in the process of completely overhauling her back end of how she's running her business. She used to be paper and pen. That's it. And so we're moving her to digital. So that's a CRM, uh, an online shop and like all of that. So building all of that to, you know, bring her business to the 21st century. Um, but you know, it's it, and that's the reason why I picked the business name I did, Limitless Impact, because the opportunities that I can help you with are truly limitless. There's nothing I'll usually say no to, and if it, it is something that I'm not comfortable with, I will find you someone who is a master at it to do it for you. No, understandable. Um, uh, the third, uh, the second one that, uh, that's on your website is social media. We've talked about that a little bit. So we'll move on to the next one. But content production um, with, the, I'm assuming you have a wealth of clients and they are all not doing the same thing. If not, that'd be a conflict of interest and it'd be very hard to promote one business over the other. But for co content uh, pro uh, content production, sorry, my mouth is uh, tripping over itself this morning, this afternoon. Um, how do you work with clients to produce content for websites, for social media, or for uh, in-person advertisement? So usually my strategy with that is it starts with a conversation. I tell them to walk me through the customer experience, walk me through your day-to-day -day, uh, life in your business. And from there, I'm able to pick little topics that we can use for uh, social media, um, you know, other types of marketing, print marketing, stuff like that. And really it's about having that conversation and me understanding your business. Um, and truly when you do work with me, you do become like, I do become a team member. I'm not just hired help. I really, you know, 
involve myself in your company and understand it and think of ways of how we can push it forward. And with content production, a lot of it is because I'm virtual and I can help clients all over the world, sometimes it's hard because, I mean, I'm in Edmonton and I have clients in Toronto, so I, I can't just go there and take, vi you know, videos or photography for you. Um, but if it's a matter of just strategically planning, okay, so you need a photo shoot. Okay, let's find a photographer. Let's plan out the photo shoot of all the materials that you need pictures of, whether it's of yourself or your product. Uh, and then video, like with Zoom, it's such a powerful tool. And if you have a good webcam, you know, it's really easy to, for me to interview you, have it recording, and then I can edit it into, you know, a homepage uh, website video for you or social media content video. Like it, it truly is, you know, something that um, I can really help with because I find that people get stumped on what to talk about. But when they're talking about their business and someone else is listening uh, with fresh eyes and able to pull out those little things that you can actually talk about and expand on more. With the pandemic, and I, I hate harping back to the pandemic because I hopefully, knock on wood, it will be over shortly and everyone will have their vaccine and we can go about our day-to-day -day business. But um, with the pandemic, have you noticed that content production has taken a slide? Because like you said, it is hard to create stuff virtually compared to in-person. Uh, I, I know creating stuff on the ground in-person is so much easier because you get that back and forth and virtually you might lose that personal connection that you're looking for. So how do you and businesses, how should businesses adapt to day-to-day, -to -day, uh, the day-to-day -day world that we live in now and create content that is both personable, that makes you feel like you're on the ground, but also in the reality of you are in a virtual world of 2021 now. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree, agree with you that the pandemic has really put, you know, a ripple in a lot of things. And I have found with content production, a lot of businesses and entrepreneurs, they're actually doing it themselves rather than hiring someone to come and take their photos or film them. It's they have gone out, they've bought a camera, you know, they have a tripod now. And with how viral like TikTok and all of that kind of stuff has gone now, a lot of it is you're doing it yourself. Uh, and it's just a matter of getting comfortable with it. Um, and for business owners that, you know, they have taken that step and they are doing that themselves, but they're still kind of feeling like they they're missing the mark or they're not quite doing it to the full potential it's just a matter of having you know a coaching session with me and having that conversation to really nail down what it is you should be talking about and what your content should be made from um you you talk about in your on your website uh one of the other areas that your services you provide is customer service and sales i i as you mentioned beforehand you were in sales a bit while working in the housing industry but how do you how does limitless impact help businesses with customer service and impact be, uh, and sales sorry so exactly like i was on sales uh for you know the majority of my adult life <laughs> <laughs> and my career and it's I definitely understand, like I took a ton of training uh, with the companies that I worked with. So I've learned so much and I've also done a ton of personal learning of reading books and signing myself up for webinars and stuff about it and understanding the difference between, you know, storefront selling and being that like one-on-one -on -one selling versus selling digitally and virtually because businesses have had to make that shift from having a brick and mortar type of business to now a digital business. And so being able to help businesses through that transition uh, from being a brick and mortar, you know, storefront to actually being a digital uh, platform, whether it's, you know, an e-commerce website or whatnot. Um, I have a client actually here in Edmonton who I have done uh, blitz cold calls day, days with them and uh, they just needed, you know, an extra person to call these leads that they had generated from campaigns 
uh, in book meetings. Customer service is another thing, um, you know, helping with creating certain responses for stuff. Uh, especially when the uh, pandemic first started, a lot of my clients had to close, you know, their storefronts. So having those kind of uh, statements uh, being emailed out um, and those communications that are going out to their customers. So that is something that I have assisted with as well. Um, you mentioned the email word. Uh, the day of phone calls of getting the word out there by post stitch is no longer around. So email marketing is key priority for businesses right now. Getting a list of emails is the hardest part, but keeping those emails active and making sure that they are always uh, contacted with specials uh, is a priority for you. Uh, email marketing and management is uh, another service that you provide. How does uh, Limitless Impact provide that service or those services? Yeah, so uh, as I said earlier, I have a content and copywriter. Uh, so if my clients are not um, wanting to invest a lot of time in writing, you know, a monthly newsletter or blogs or whatnot. Typically what I have them do is kind of create like a bullet, uh, bullet point list of kind of the topics they want to talk about. And then I send that to my content and copywriter and she writes the entire thing. Then I go into the email uh, management program, whether it's MailChimp, ActiveCampaign, Kajabi, whatever it is, actually build the email and send it out. Um, as well as when you are selling digital products, whether they're, you know, products that are being shipped to you or online courses or whatnot, there's a ton of email correspondence that go with that. So building those workflows, so they're automatic. So, you know, someone buys something, okay, cool. All right, they get a thank you email, they get a confirmation email. Okay, they got the product. You don't wanna just end communication there. You wanna keep, those touch points so that you can get them to buy again and do that upsell, right? So creating those emails to continue with that growth of that client's uh, life expect uh, expectancy with your company. Emails can be, uh, yet again, like social media, double-edged sword, because you don't want to oversaturate people with so many, inundate so many people, uh, people with so many emails. So what's the sweet spot that businesses and yourself and businesses need to find? Because like I said, you don't want to inundate people with emails because I've gotten 12 emails from the same company once and I then hit that unsubscribe button. So how do you work with businesses to ensure that, hey, you know what, the message is getting out there and people are reading it because you want, if they don't open it, there's no point of sending an email. Exactly. And, you know, I always equate it to when you're, you go into a retail store and someone greets you as soon as you come in the door and you walk around for a little bit and then someone comes up, Oh, how can I help you? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right. And you're like, Oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just browsing. You walk through. And then of course it happens like three or four more times. So I always equate it to that, that you want to seem available, but you also don't want to seem annoying. So Again, it comes down to understanding um, the insights of your email marketing. Uh, so understanding, okay, so this list of people are very, very active uh, and they always are opening and clicking in the inside of your email. Awesome, okay. These people, you know, they're not as active. They are opening them sometimes, okay. Um, but it really does come down to categorizing your email list and, uh, still communicating with people that way rather than just sending out mass emails to your entire list because your open rate is not going to be a true reflection in my opinion as well as also you also want to be cleaning your email list regularly like for myself I have it on a to-do list at the end of the month that I go through and any subscribers that haven't opened up an email in the last two months, haven't engaged at all, I just get rid of them. There's no point in them sitting in on that list and me continuing to send them emails if they're not engaging with it. So why keep them on it? So, and I know a lot of people are like, oh no, like, you gotta, <laughs> like keep them on your list so you can get as high as the number as possible. But again, it, it, it's the same thing with an Instagram account. The follower count doesn't matter. It's your engagement rate. So if you have, you know, a thousand followers and 900 of them are 
continuously engaged on your account, liking, commenting, sharing, all of that, that's amazing. And if you have 50,000 followers, but only, you know, 5,000 of them are active, then that's not a true reflection, yeah. right? So it's the same thing with email marketing. Um, and the last area that I want to talk about before we switch into a different subject is special projects. Um, what do you mean by special project? Because that is a, yet again, another umbrella terminology. So how does Limitless Impact help businesses with quote unquote special projects? So it, it really can be a combination of things. Typically, uh, the trend right now with my clients, it's been website building um, and, or revamping their business or their website for their business. Um, but it can be if you have uh, a, a live event or a webinar event or something like that, that you need technical support with setting it up and the communications with it. That is what I would classify as a, spe a special project. Um, you need that support for, you know, a certain amount of time, but you don't need a virtual assistant, you know, for six months sort of thing. You just need help for that one month to launch it you know, set it all up and then wrap it up. And then, you know, I come back when you do the next one sort of thing. Now we'll move into the next set of questions here. And that, that is businesses in general. Um, as you said, you have 40 clients and growing all every day, I'm assuming. Um, what is the biggest issue facing client, uh, businesses today? What is the biggest issue facing your clients today? Because everyone's unique and I know COVID-19 is going to be top, but if we took COVID-19 out of the way right now, what is the biggest issue facing businesses today? I find with my clients, really the biggest issue that we struggle with together um, is I find some of them can be a little bit scattered in the sense of they have all of these amazing ideas, um, but they're just not sure which ones to prioritize and launch first. Or if, you know, if it even makes sense to do this one idea rather than this one. Um, and I find that is extremely overwhelming for a lot of my clients. Um, and typically what, what I recommend is, I honestly, I just created Google Doc and it's shared between the two of us and it's just a place where they can just brain dump everything. So it gets out of their head. They can elaborate as much as they want, you know, whether it's courses or a, a new product or, you know, literally anything. Um, and it's, it's just a place that they can pull it out of their head. They, they won't forget about it because it's on that, in that document. Um, and it kind of helps refocus um kind of our strategy and the path that we're heading and honestly a lot of my clients i tend to we work you know really closely together even if we're you know thousands of kilometers apart but we re, like i become a confidant for them and they can really vent if they you know if a client's pissed at something that they did or you know had a bad experience whatever it all it happens all the time uh, no one's immune to it. Like they can come to me, they can vent about it. You know, I'm a business owner too. I understand the ups and downs and the stresses and the worries. Um, and I'm, I become a friend more or less. And I find that really helps my clients too, especially with the pandemic. And so, something that I talk about as well is I hate the word hustle and grind because it just has this negative energy around it and connotation that if you're not hustling or grinding 24 seven, that you're not successful. Most of the time, the reason why people go into business is to have more freedom. But if you're hustling and grinding 24 seven, you don't really have that freedom that much. Um, and it's, it's definitely something that I've noticed in the entrepreneur, you know, um, society, I guess, is, is just this broad term that everyone uses. And it's if you're not hustling, you know, you're not working hard enough when that is not the case at all. <laughs> and that that's an area that I want to talk about, because uh, as someone young like yourself, who's 25, 24, I'm assuming when you started your business, it takes a lot of uh, 
cojones to actually decide, you know what, I'm going to give up a full-time job. I'm going to give up potentially benefits and, uh, uh, and, and strike out on my own. And it is, and yet I hate to use that term as well, but the hustle and grind of the first few months of getting it off the ground is always the hardest. Does Limitless Impact help businesses or potential entrepreneurs get through that process of, you know what, this is what you need to do. This is step A, B, C, and D to get to step Z. How do you work with potential new entrepreneurs to start their own businesses as well? Honestly, this is something that I love to talk about. And I have young entrepreneurs, even older entrepreneurs that have had a huge career shift and they're like, okay, I'm ready to finally take that risk and start my own business. I've had this idea forever, blah, blah, blah. And I love mentoring people. And I have, you know, young women, young men all the time messaging me on Instagram saying like, hey, do you mind if I could like pick your brain for, you know, 30 minutes over Zoom? I'm like, hell yeah, of course you can. Like I'm all about spreading the knowledge and helping other people create you know, their future for themselves and creating this legacy as well. And one of the biggest things that I'm super grateful for is the support system that I had to, you know, push me and say, you know, why not? Like, take the risk. If you fall on your face, you know, you learn stuff along the way. And you learn so much more from failure, failure than you do success. And it's, it's definitely something I'm extremely passionate about is coaching and mentoring other young entrepreneurs and coaching them and teaching them different ways to set up their business and as well as a cost efficient way, because myself, I didn't have a lot of savings at the time when I started my business, I was, you know, it was just kind of this little bit of an idea. I took a course from a lady in the US to kind of figure out how I would set up my virtual assistance business. Uh, a lot of market research <laughs> and a lot of reading and learning more about how can I set up my business as fast as I can so that I can hit the ground running. And my goal was to launch for January 1st, 2020. And I had two weeks to get everything set up. So it was a big, big goal and a lot of long nights, <laughs> but oh. I finally was able to do it. And that's something that I talk about and I want to educate people that if you have a goal in mind and you have the drive, there's nothing that's going to stop you. So, so from, from your standpoint, what is the biggest thing that young entrepreneurs or new wannabe entrepreneurs do wrong in the first few moments of starting a business, because that is always the key part is successful business entrepreneurs like yourself who lasted 15 months and have clients now are great. But you also hear about those business entrepreneurs who say, okay, I made it six months and I couldn't do it. And I left. What is the biggest obstacle that new entrepreneurs need to overcome before even thinking about becoming an entrepreneur? I think the biggest thing comes down to two components. One, fear and not believing in yourself and not believing that you have the capa uh, capability to make it work. And two, is not asking for help and thinking that you have to go it, go it alone. And so every time I get a DM or an email from someone that's asking for help, I'm like, yes, you're doing the right thing. Like, and that's something that I did. I reached out to my network of people that I knew had started businesses on their own at a young age and picked their brain and asked them what worked and what didn't work. So I could learn from their mistakes so I could avoid making my own. And learning from their experiences is huge. And it saved me so much time. <laughs> Um, before we get, before we wrap up here, I want to take this moment and I want to ask you one question and this is going to be, it's going to seem like a weird question, but it's going to, going to make, make or break you up here. <laughs> 
why should people reach out to you and why should people in today's society where finances are tough, why should people contact Limitless Impact and get your services? Because in today's society, it is hard out there. Finances are tight. So why should people reach out to you? Really, I how I typically approach this question is I know there's thousands and thousands of virtual assistants available online. And you could literally hire someone on Upworks or Viber for $5 an hour who's, you know, across the world and who can do it for you. Yeah, you know, that could be a good solution for you. But when you work with me, my packages are extremely flexible. I have made my business the way it is because I want to support those entrepreneurs who don't necessarily have a ton of capital, who are in that growth phase that they need help but they can't afford to hire a full-time employee or even a part-time employee. I am a business expense. I'm a subcontractor. You can write it off. That's the biggest thing of why I've set myself up this way. And I, I am that one-stop shop. So you can go and hire a graphic designer on Viver for, you know, eight bucks an hour. Or they can design a logo for you for $40. Okay. Now, what do you do with it? Yeah, you're going to plaster it on your, you know, everywhere you can. But with me, you get your logo. Okay. Now let's talk about a strategy. Let's get it on your website. Let's get some photos done of you. And that's all included in a monthly package. There's all these different things that I can help you with for a flat fee once a month. And there's no commitment either where you have to sign up for a minimum three months. Like I have clients that go through that feast and famine, which is pretty common, especially with COVID. And they'll email me at the end of the month and say, hey, you know, I have a medical procedure next month or, you know, I have a really big expense coming up next month. I don't think I can afford to work with you that, this month. I'm like, hey, no worries. You know, reach out if you have questions. I'm an open book. You know, I'll see you in two months sort of thing if you're ready for it. And that's something that, will always be the core philosophy of my business is I want to be flexible, attainable, and affordable for as many entrepreneurs as possible. So with that, I, I asked the follow-up question to that, how can people reach you? How can people find you on the internet? Because uh, yet again, the show notes, uh, we'll, we'll link the website, limitlessimpact.ca, but how can people reach out to you if they're looking at starting that discussion to say, you know what, we might need your services. How can people reach out to you? So I have my website, uh, it's www.limitlessimpact.ca as well as my social media. So you can find me on Facebook and it's my full business name, uh, Limitless Impact Virtual Management, or you can find me on Instagram and my handle is at Limitless Impact. Uh, typically I find a lot of people reach out either on Instagram or filling out the content uh, contact form on my website. Uh, but whatever way that you're comfortable with is good with me. Awesome. Uh, we will link your Facebook page and your Instagram account in the show notes as well. Uh, Brianna, I want to thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. You know, I really do enjoy talking about my business and how I can help others. And thank you so much for giving me the platform to do that.